Wow, can we just take a second to consider how curly my hair is right now? I'm letting it dry naturally, and yeah, this is wild. You'd think the amount of, of straightening I do of my hair, that by now it would not still be this curly, but it's pretty wild. And I'm sorry that my shirt is so wrinkled. Um, I'm comfortable and I don't want to change it. All right, let's talk about drips, baby. Let's talk about you and me. Is that inappropriate? That's probably really inappropriate. Um, hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Edwards, and today we're gonna talk about ICU drips. Um, we're gonna talk about what do I mean by drips? What does titrating mean? Um, and then just some things that I think are really important to keep in mind when dealing with drips. Um, this is a video that I have gotten a couple requests for. Um, so really, if, I'm not gonna teach you about like the medications and stuff that, that you deal with in drips. I'm gonna teach you really um, things that you need to consider and think about when you're dealing with drips. If you like this video, please make sure to hit the thumbs up and click subscribe so you can follow along with more of my nursing videos um, and soon to be CRNA school videos coming up in January when I start. Without further ado, let's get right into it. So what do I mean by a drip? Um, what I mean by a drips is a type of medication goes through an IV intravenously, um, it, it's in a bag and it drips in, um, you know, so to speak. So it's, it's like a continuous infusion and is, is another way um, that we say it. So basically it's a medication that the patient is continuously on. Um, some examples are like sedative medications. Um, so you want to keep your patient sedated, you know, if they're intubated. Um, so the, the medication is continuously going to them so that they stay in a constant state of sedation. Um, another example of a drip that we do um, a lot are vasopressors, and those are drips to help bring the blood pressure up. And then um, there's also drips that will bring the blood pressure down. Um, there's drips that help the pump, help the heart like pump better and squeeze better. Um, these are all different types of medications that are considered drips and that are continuous infusions that the patient is on continuously. Um, so what does titratable mean? What, so you're titrating these drips. That means that you're adjusting the rate at which the drips are going. So you're titrating. So if a patient is on a medication to help keep their blood pressure up and their blood pressure is now getting too high, you would titrate the medication down. So you would lower the amount of medication that you're giving them or lower the rate of the medication. Um, on the other hand, if their blood pressure is um, still continuing to drop, even though they're getting this medication, you would want to titrate it up. So you want to increase the amount that they're getting to help increase their blood pressure. Um, so whatever effect that you want, um, you want to titrate or adjust the amount of medication that you're giving to get that desired effect. And so this is something that ICU nurses um, are able to do. It's within our scope of um, you know what we do every day. Um, if a patient is on a drip, we titrate the drip and we titrate it based on the order. So that's one of the first things I wanna talk about is always make sure you know what your order is for that medication that the patient's on. So some medications, um, like say it's um, Diprovan or Propofol, um, sometimes, I don't remember if it's like tens or fives, um, but say it wants you to titrate it by five. So say the medication is going at 15, um, I think it's 15 mics per kg per, minute or hour or whatever it is. So say it's going at 15 and it says titrate by fives um, to reach a RAS of negative two. And say that patient's RAS score, which is like their like sedation score is only at a negative one. You need them more sedated. You would titrate it up by however much it says. So it might say titrate by five mics every 10 minutes until desired, you know, until you get your RAS of negative two. So what you would do is you would titrate it up by five. So say it was going at 15, you increase it to 20 um, and you give it however much time that like five minutes, 10 minutes, whatever it says to see if you get that desired effect. And if you don't, you go up by another 10. Um, so you really want to follow whatever your order says. Um, so you're not just going to get handed, you know, a drip and say, and you know, where it doesn't tell you what to do really. Um, if this is the case, you want to clarify your order with the doctor and see exactly what you what they want you to be titrating it by. So um, always check your order. Make sure you know what you're titrating by on your order. And it'll also, um, it should tell you what to start it at. So if you're starting the medication for the first time, it'll say, you know, start at 10 mics per kg per minute or hour or whatever, um, and then titrate accordingly. So that's a big thing is know what the order says. And you also want to know why is this patient getting the medication? Um, say they're getting levofed or norepinephrine. Um, you want to know why exactly that one versus a different presser. 
Um, so it's always really important to know why they're on that medication. Or if they're on multiple pressors, say they're on two or three different pressors, they could be on like um, levofed, neosinephrine, and vasopressin. Um, and they're starting to say they're starting to improve. You want to know which one the doctor wants you to be titrating down first, or if they want you to kind of titrate them together and get them off of one first. Um, so yeah, another thing um, that you want to consider when dealing with drips is um, you're always trying to work on a titrate. Uh, I said a and one at the same time. Um, is you always want to work on having like the the least amount that you need to help that patient and work on getting them off as fast as you can. You know whatever they can the patient can tolerate, obviously. So your goal is to you know as soon as you come in, see where the patient is. If they're on a presser and their map is like you know 85, their systolic's like 120 or something, you go ahead and start titrating that down. You want to try and like be giving them the least amount of medication that they need to get those like minimum parameters that you want. So always be working towards giving them the least amount of medication and work on um, you know working them off of the drips. Um, a big thing that I like to um, I want to mention is if they're on like a presser or something like that, or even sedatives, whatever. Um, try and get an A line if they don't already have an arterial line, so that you can really monitor their blood pressure and keep a close eye on it. Because as you're titrating these medications, you know some patients are so sensitive. That's another one of the points that I want to talk about is how sensitive some patients are. So really follow those guidelines you know of, of waiting those couple minutes before you increase something because someone can be sensitive and it, it takes it a little bit of time the medication to get you know through the tubing into their system so give it a little time because some patients are so sensitive that you don't want to you know skyrocket their blood pressure um, or bottom it out vice, you know vice versa depending on what you're giving them so always be really careful um, if you can get an a-line so you can really watch that blood pressure that's ideal um, and then if you you know just be very tedious of how much you're giving and really watching the effect that it's having on that patient so that you're not you know, causing a crazy reaction because you know, they're getting too much um, at, at a time. So this is something um, that you kind of learn as you're doing it. It's a little bit hard to explain, but I'm gonna try and explain the best I can. So if your patient has you know, like a central line or they have multiple medications like wide together, like going where they meet in, the, in line, you know, where you can put multiple IV tubings together if the medications are compatible, watch your pressors and be careful of of where things are wide because if you say you you have it going with maintenance fluids and you start like an antibiotic that could give them like a little bolus of the medication because it's pushing it through faster um, so bolus is like a, a larger amount of the medication so because it was going at this rate and now all of a sudden you have more pressure coming through another medication coming through faster that could push more of that medication in and say it's a presser this could like skyrocket their blood pressure so you always want to watch where you have your titratable medications and what's running with them so that you don't cause a reaction that you don't, you know, that you're not intending to cause. Make sure you check your order for the maximum amount of that medication. Um, so, you know, every medication has a maximum amount that can be given. Um, like, for instance, I think with um, propofol or diprovan, it's 50 um, is the max um, for, you know, a lot of ICUs. But say you know they're like an anesthesia, like an anesthesia, they'll go way higher on it. So, but you want to know what the maximum that you can safely give, um, and that the order is for. So always know the maximum amount that you have on those medications. And if, if you need, if you're increasing your medications and getting close to those maximum doses, make sure you're talking to your doctor, communicating with the um, doctor nurse practitioner, so that they can, you know, if they need to add an additional medication to help get the job done, they can do that. And the last thing that I'm going to mention about drips is be careful when you're weaning off sedation um, or if you're doing like a sedation vacation, which is something we do every shift. Um, if a patient's, you know, intubated, if they're on um, sedation, you decrease the sedation or stop it completely to check the neurological status of the patient to see how they're functioning under that sedation. So you, be really careful when you do this. Don't stop the sedation and walk away, especially if the patient's not restrained because some patients, they the uh, sedatives wear off really quickly, whereas others it can take um, much longer. So always be careful when you're either doing your station vacation or weaning sedation that you're watching the patient. And if you need to, um, get an order for restraints and restrain them so that they don't accidentally self-extubate. Because it's really easy to titrate down sedatives, and especially if you don't know how that patient's gonna react waking up, they could wake up really um, aggressively startled and go right for that tube and pull it out. So always, always please be very careful when you're weaning down your sedation. Um, I swear, like you can have an you know 85 year old patient on propofol, and the second you start weaning it down, it's like they get this super strength. I, I swear, propofol gives you super strength when you're waking up. 
Um, and it, like I've had like five nurses having to hold down like this hundred pound, 85 year old woman before I was waking up from sedation. Just because some people wake up, you can't always anticipate how they're gonna wake up. So be really aware of that when you're titrating your drips. So yeah, I think those are the main points that I wanted to talk about when you're dealing with drips and um, continuous infusions, titratable medications, stuff like that. I hope this was helpful for you, especially if you're like a new ICU nurse or a nursing student. Um, thank you guys again so much for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. Bye.